Every great marketer has been faced with this moment, an opportunity to exhibit bravery in the midst of uncertainty or to take a risk on something they truly believed in. The Brave Marketer podcast features today's most progressive marketers and uncovers the brave marketing moments that have shaped their careers and the brands they've influenced. Hosted by Brave Software and Never Stop Marketing and me, your host, Donnie DeVorn, together we'll discover the decision-making process and mindset work that led to their success. Hello, listeners. You're listening to a new episode of the Brave Marketer podcast. And this week, we are talking to Cami Dunaway, and she's the CMO of Duolingo. And they're one of the most popular language learning apps. 500 million people use it. I really enjoyed doing this episode because not only does Cami have a great background, which she'll talk about, but she talks about a lot of the innovative stuff that she's doing at Duolingo. And if you haven't had a chance, maybe before we really get going with this, do a quick search for Duolingo Push and watch some of the viral videos and check out the memes. We get really into that. And so if you have a take a look at that first, you'll just have more familiarity with what we're talking about. But before we hop into today's episode, we want to highlight our Brave Pick of the Week. Every episode, we choose a brand that has run an ad campaign with Brave as our Pick of the Week. And this one, we're talking about Amex. American Express set out to target a hard-to-reach audience that was not seeing their programmatic and TV ads. And as you may know, Brave's audience, we call them the unreachables. And why is that? Is because they don't see programmatic ads or YouTube ads. 80% of them are cord cutters. So they're really unreachable with a lot of other media. So the goal of this campaign was to introduce Brave users to the Cobalt card and offer our audience a 45,000 bonus point offer and other sp- special perks as an incentive. Now, in this week's episode, you're going to meet Cami Dunaway, as I mentioned, CMO for Duolingo. And Cami previously served as the U.S. president and CMO of Kid Zania, an international location-based entertainment concept focused on children's role-playing activities. Cami also served as EVP for Nintendo, with oversight of all sales and marketing activities for the company in the U.S., Canada, and LATAM. Before joining Nintendo, she was CMO for Yahoo!, and served at Frito-Lay for 13 years in various leadership roles in sales and marketing, including VP of Kids and Teen Brands. She's also an author of a best-selling book called Fit Matters, How to Love Your Job, which she wrote during her maternity leave. And with no further ado, today's episode of The Brave Marketer. Hi, Cammie. Welcome to The Brave Marketer podcast. How are you doing today? I am great. Really happy to be here. Yeah, we're really excited to have you on. As I mentioned at the top of the podcast, what an amazing uh, resume and experience that you have. But for today, we really want to focus on Duolingo. And as you know, the Brave Marketer podcast is all about identifying those brave moments when you took a bit of a risk and hopefully it paid off and something that our listeners could learn from. So why don't we start off, what is your brave marketing moment? So I am really proud of how brave we were at Duolingo in leaning into some passionate kind of fan content. And occasionally it can be a bit unorthodox. So that's where the bravery comes in. I think the um, the first time we did this in a you know really purposeful way was in 2019 around April Fools. We had observed a lot of social chatter about our mascot. We have a mascot, an owl named Duo. And he is known for doing slightly passive aggressive push notifications. And we had seen people talking about these. So we decided to lean into this and we shared a teaser image on social that showed Duo shadowed in this dark doorway with a coming soon headline. And it was a little bit scary looking. And the internet just went crazy, creating these memes, um, doing screenshots. And some of them had lines like, you know, do your Duolingo Spanish or vanish, which was probably not something Mm. we would have done on our own. But we continued to play along with it. Uh, We released a video called Push, which talked about allowing people to actually hire Duo for in real life push notifications, which just fueled the flames higher. And that video now 
stands said over 5 million views. Some of the user-generated video that that spawned has even more views than that. We gained so much in terms of social followers and just relevance and being part of pop culture. Mm -hmm. And for me, actually part of the ultimate success metric was that during this time, my college aged son told me that all his friends on campus were talking about it. So that told me that we were hitting a good mark. And I think that part of being brave in this example was knowing that some of the content created was going to be outside of our brand boundaries. But I was okay taking that risk because I knew that this would help keep us relevant, make us more likable, make us feel more human. I also believed that there was enough goodwill around our brand because people understand that our mission is making language learning free and accessible for everyone. And that's a really powerful mission. So that gave me a little bit more confidence in doing this. That's amazing. And I love the I, I love the point where you know your kids in college are now like saying, "Hey, people are talking about this." I'm experiencing a little bit the same thing at Brave, where nobody knew about Brave two years ago when I joined, and now people are talking about it. So it's a cool moment when that crosses the chasm, as they say in that fa- famous book. So besides like the chatter and the five million views, did you see a bump in signups and sales? What were some of the measurable th- things you saw on the business side? We did first in terms of social, I think our say our Instagram following grew as much during kind of the month that there was a lot of buzz around this as it had grown in the seven years prior to that when we had our Instagram account started. A typical post with a duo hashtag might get around, you know, five hundred mentions and there were over two million. And all of this did lead to a big increase in people downloading and using the app. And another piece of this that was important to me was that the team had a lot of fun doing it. And I think another aspect of being brave is turning over the reins to young marketers on your team. Mm -hmm. And I still have these really wonderful memories of this dinner that I was at with my team and we were drinking beers, we were brainstorming. And one of the team members had been seeing some of this chatter and suggested that we lean into it. And for me, there's nothing more that I love than saying yes to someone on my team who has an idea that is grounded in kind of understanding our consumers, but maybe makes me a little bit nervous. And I think when you do that, it just helps you unleash a culture of creativity and empowerment among your team, which to me is something that's really important and really gratifying when I see it happening. Yeah. When I see all these unique videos and memes and content, the NFT craze is just all over the place. Does that come up in conversation at all? <laughs> yes. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That'd be uh, p- perfect for this. Cool. And what else comes to mind when you're thinking about brave moments at Duolingo or even you know earlier in your career? Yeah. Another recent moment at Duolingo would be uh, something that we did this year where we realized that everybody complains about a lack of time to learn a language. But also the average person spends 14 minutes a day on the toilet. So we decided that we would create nice three-ply toilet paper and put our trademark, you know, these quirky phrases and sentences that we're known for, translate it into five different languages and give people the chance to learn a language while they were on the that. toilet. So we created Duolingo Roll. <laughs> and yet again, this was something where it became a trending topic on Twitter and searches for Duolingo role on Google went through the roof. We got hundreds of requests for the product and we actually did produce real life toilet paper rolls. So that was another one that took a little bit of bravery to associate your brand with toilet paper. <laughs> but in our case, it, it worked out really well. And what do you think has driven the growth? Oh, I was just mentioning before the, we started that I was reading literature that you have 300 million users and you corrected me and said, that's an outdated number. And we have now 500 million users. I mean, that is just massive 
growth. It seems like you're right on with some of these brave moments. What's the key drivers of the growth? I think there are a couple. First, we really are the first language learning platform that's designed for um, the mobile phone first, that's designed for digital natives. And the hardest thing about learning a language, if you've ever tried back in, in school or, or since, is staying motivated. And so what we've done is designed a product that has a lot of gamification elements to it. It is just fun because we believe that if you have fun when you're learning, you'll stick to it and you'll end up going further and achieving your goals. So the product is really just an amazing experience. And most of our growth has come through word of mouth because the product is so good. Now, certainly last year during COVID, with all of us at home um, looking for small things that we could do to feel some sense of control and productivity in our life, language learning was something that a lot of people turned to. So we had a lot of a lot of growth during COVID. Also, Duolingo was used by a lot of schools, and so both parents looking for a solution for their kids that now were doing at-home schooling, as well as teachers, all found that it was uh, pretty easy to tell their kids, go play a little bit of Duolingo today Mm -hmm. and know that it's something that they would enjoy while also learning. That's great. So why don't we get out of the brave moments and talking about what you're seeing in marketing in in general? What do you think is the biggest threat or the most pressing challenge we're being faced right now in our marketing and advertising industry? I certainly think that the challenge around privacy and tracking, whether through you know cookies or the recent iOS 14 changes are very real. I'm fortunate at Duolingo that paid acquisition is a pretty small part of our growth. So much of our growth comes organically, but the iOS 14 does still create attribution challenges for us. And I think that ultimately, marketers are going to have to be even more grounded than ever and really understanding their consumer and even more creative in figuring out ways to reach them. I also think that it makes the importance of having a great product or a great service even more significant because growth through word of mouth becomes more important. Mm-hmm. And so what are you guys doing and how are you planning for the privacy and the demise of the uh, three par- third party cookie? Yeah, so again, we will use some more of our first party data and my team is spending a lot of time brainstorming about word of mouth. How do we um, build more word of mouth levers into our product? Like last year, at the end of the year, we did a year-end review where we gave people stats about all of how many words they had learned, how much time they had spent practicing, how that compared to other learners around the world, and saw tremendous social sharing of that experience. I think that we're just going to have to really start to think beyond paid advertising. And paid advertising will always be essential as a marketer, but it can't be the only tool in our toolbox. Exactly. And we're big fans of, it's not about we're against collecting data. It's about people opting in to provide their data. So once, you know, someone engages with an ad on Brave and they go to your website and you collect first party data, that's great. It's like a, it's a one-to-one relationship between you and the consumer. But on our side, we don't collect any data. Right. It's about the transparency and about really clearly showing the value that you're giving back to the consumer. What do you think is the biggest opportunity our industry is facing? You know, one of the things that that I've seen with COVID is that um, we as marketers have to be a much more agile than we've been in the past, whether it's moving away from the upfronts to being able to do much more rapid iteration and media planning. I just think that learning to be responsive and fast is a good thing and it just creates new opportunities. For example, last year, we had to pivot away from 
an in real life event that we do for super fans called Duocon. And we had it all planned out in Brooklyn and had to move to a virtual event. But in doing that, we increased the audience from a few hundred to over a hundred thousand. And so for all of us, just taking a step back and saying for all of the difficulties and challenges of last year, what were the opportunities that arose? And how can I take those learnings about doing things differently and recognize where in some cases it means doing things better? Even thinking about how we operate as a team. Now, my team is very geographically dispersed, but we had to get even better at asynchronous communication, things like using Slack to do updates, you know, using Zoom for brainstorms rather than always relying on offsites. So I think right now we're in a good moment to say, what did we learn as a company, as a marketer, as an industry during COVID? And how can that help us really embrace new ways of doing things? Cammie, what's the most exciting thing you're working on right now? I am excited about building out a truly global team. I now have marketers in China, Japan, Brazil, Mexico, London, Germany, hiring someone in India. And this gives us such a creative laboratory. And we are testing out all kinds of things like doing television in Japan with a crazy earworm jingle. We are testing doing drones in Brazil, where we are projecting Duolingo's famous push notifications on the side of buildings for people to see. So I love just enabling the team to experiment and try new things and then take them from one market and see if they work in another. That's great. And you've done so much great stuff in your career. You've even written a book. If you could finish this sentence, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't done or started X. I'd say I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't started taking career risks and stopped playing it safe. I think it's easy to follow a prescribed linear career path going up the next rung of the ladder. For me, I went to business school, started in Frito-Lay as a um, brand assistant, very clearly laid out path. But one of the early risks I took was that I left this cushy brand marketing job at Frito-Lay And I went out into the field, into sales at Frito-Lay. I actually had to run a route truck, Mm -hmm. which I was pretty horrible at doing. But I learned a ton about leadership. And then several years later, I jumped out of the very known world of consumer packaged goods into the world of digital marketing at Yahoo, which was still pretty uncharted territory in the early 2000s. And even a few years ago, I took a couple of years off to be a mom and to write a book, as as you mentioned. And so for me, making those kinds of um, brave choices has really led to learning, which then leads to even greater opportunities. Mm Yeah. And we have something in common. I grew up in the CPG industry. I worked for a company called News America Marketing that did the FSIs, Mm -hmm. if you remember. Oh, yes. Oh, bought many of those in my days at Free yeah, And I was on such a course. It was 10 years and coordinator and then account associate and director and group sales manager and VP groups. That like every year is just promotions. But at some point, I was just like, I don't want to be typecasted a CPG guy for the rest of my life. And I took a step into digital and then I saw I was going on blockchain and you know that whole thing led me to Brave. So I totally hear you about you know, stepping out of that comfort zone and, and following your heart. Great. So my last question for you is, can you nominate another Brave marketer that we should be have on this show? Absolutely. I would like to nominate a woman named Cindy Donahue. She is the CMO of Highmark Health. She's a colleague of mine here in Pittsburgh. And as you know, healthcare is a space that is dramatically in need of brave marketing. 
And Cindy and her team are doing some really amazing breakthrough work. Love it. Thank you so much, Cami, for being on the show. I loved how you shared those uh, brave moments and a bit about your career. And I enjoyed the chat today. I enjoyed it as well. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Brave Marketer podcast. Hopefully you took away some notes on how Cami was innovative with the Duolingo push, how she is expanding her team into internationally and doing all that hiring during COVID. She mentioned biggest threats was privacy and third-party cookies going away, which obviously Brave is in a sweet spot for because we are the privacy browser with no third-party cookies. So hopefully you enjoyed it. We're sad to share that there's only one more episode left of this season, but don't worry, we're gonna come back with season two, but we are gonna take a little break. But with that being said, we would love your feedback. So as we roll into season two, what did you like? What did you dislike? What were your favorite episodes? Do you have someone that you'd wanna nominate for a brave marketer? What topics are important to you? So in the show notes for this episode, you'll find a link to a brief survey. And the first 50 people who fill out the survey will earn a $20 gift card redeemable at the Brave Swag Store, where we have a ton of Brave Bat merchandise, Brave and Bat merchandise. Everything from Brave and hats and rain jackets and laptop stickers and socks and even our own NFTs. So fill out that survey today, redeem your coupon. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much.